All right then, so we have this object now encapsulating everything it means to be this user in one single place. And that is a good, good first step. And we can access these properties right here and these methods by dot notation. We saw that in the last video. I could say user one, which is the variable name here, the object itself, dot name, and that is gonna access this property right here. So we can use this dot notation, user one dot name, user one dot email, user one dot login. But say for instance, I wanted to update one of these properties at a certain time in my code. How do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple. We can just say user one dot name and then set that equal to something else. So I could change the name from Ryu to Yoshi or something like that. So if I save this now and then call over here, user one, oops, I have to spell it right, user one, then this will show me the object and the name is now Yoshi because down here we changed the name. But if I change it back and I can do that in the console as well, user one dot name is now equal to Ryu again, then this should update. So if I call user one again to see that object, we can see the name property is now Ryu, all right? Now we can access properties in other ways, we don't just have to use dot notation, we can use square brackets as well. So say for example, I want to access the email property. Using dot notation, I'd say user one dot email, right? And that gets me, but I can also use square brackets. I can say user one, and then in square brackets, inside a string, the email property, right? And it's important you put this in a string. You can't just say email like that, it needs to be a string. And that is gonna go out and it's gonna do the same thing as this. It's gonna give me the email property of this object. So if I press enter, we can see that now, cool. So that works as well. And of course, we can also update properties this way. I could say user one and then in brackets, the name like so, and set that equal to Mario. And this time, if I call user one, we should see that updated name. So we can also use square brackets as well as this dot notation. But you might be thinking, well, why? What purpose does this serve? Well, this way of accessing the property is useful when what we're accessing is dynamic and not necessarily set in stone. For example, let me just clear the console here. And let's just create a variable called prop. And this is gonna be equal to a string called name. So this property right here, this variable, may update at some point. It might be email at some point. Now what we could do is say user one and then just pass in the prop to find out. So what it's doing is passing this string right here into this square bracket and it's finding the name property. Now if later on prop became email, then using user one prop like so would get me the email. So this thing that we're passing in could be dynamic and it could be chosen by the user some way, shape or form. And then when we try to access it, it's gonna do it. We can't do that by saying user one dot prop because that doesn't exist. We're looking for here a property on the user called prop and it doesn't exist, right? Here, we're passing in a variable. So that's why this can be useful sometimes. But most of the time, you'll probably find yourself using dot notation to grab the properties like so. Now, as well as accessing the different properties and methods on an object, we can also create new properties or methods on that object as well. For example, I could say user one dot age, which doesn't exist yet, and I could set that equal to 25, and that is gonna create an age property on that user. So now if I type out user one, like so, we can see this age property now at the end. So I could easily say user one dot age to grab that age property. And I could do the same thing for methods as well. I could say user one dot log info is equal to some kind of function. And then inside here, we could log something to the console. So this is how we add on properties and methods to objects that already exist as well. Now, I'm not a big fan of this. I think if an object has a property or method, it should be kept inside the object literal definition right here so that we can see everything in one place. In my eyes, if 
at some point in my program, a user is going to have an age property. I should put that age property in to begin with, even if I don't know the value of it. I could just set it as null or zero to begin with and then update it later on. I don't necessarily like adding on extra properties later, but sometimes you may have to and you understand that that's not everyone's view. That's just my view. So you can do it if you want to. So this is how we can create objects now, how we can access the different properties and methods on them. But there's one flaw. Imagine we had several users here, right? So we had user one, user two, user three, etc., And they all had these different values for the properties. So how would we combat this? Well, yeah, what we could do is copy this and paste it down below and say, you know, user two is Yoshi, etc. And then we could do another one for user three, like so. But this is getting a bit out of control now because what we're doing is we're writing the property names and the functions over and over again for each different object. Now, I want to show you a way we can easily create multiple objects of the same type because they're all a user, right? All the same type of object. They just have different values inside. I want to show you how we can easily create multiple instances of this kind of user object without having to rewrite the object over and over again. And I'm going to show you that by using a new feature in ES6 called classes.